Now that we're done setting up the mixer tab, let's connect to the flight controller again and we'll go to the outputs tab this time. And you might have noticed that there's this message up here that says PWM output is disabled. Motors and servos will not work. Use outputs tab to enable. Well, here we are at the outputs tab. And this is the switch that it's referring to. This is kind of a safety feature that's built into iNav. And I don't know if maybe it's for liability to make sure that the user understands that when you enable this, you are enabling the output to drive your motor. Now, I don't have a battery connected. I'm just driving the flight controller right now off the USB connection. So I'm, I don't have any power to drive the motor. So I'm, I'm safe right now. But just understand that when this is enabled, your motors are capable of being driven. And it also includes the servos. Your servos won't even work until this is enabled. So nothing, none of your controls will be routed to your outputs on your flight controller until this is enabled. So it's important to have that enabled. Now, the ESC protocol, there's a number of different protocols you can have here depending on what ESC you're using. I haven't really looked into this. I don't know that much about ESCs. I don't know if mine supports D-Shot or not. But you can select one of these D-Shot protocols, brushed, multi-shot, one-shot. I just leave it at standard. Standard should work for most ESCs anyway. But I think there might be some advantages to using an appropriate protocol for your ESC. Server refresh rate, again, I just leave that at 50 hertz for mine. Yours may operate at a higher frequency. Stop motor on low throttle is enabled by default, and I like to keep it that way. That just turns off the motor when your throttle is down to idle. These two features I haven't even looked at. I don't know what they do. There's little help icons over here if you're if you have any question about what it does, not every option has a help icon, but you can roll over it and see that this particular setting allows the limit to limit effective power fed to the motors, and you can read more. Now, you might also notice that there's a couple of items that are shaded here. If you go up to these application options in iNav itself and open that, you can see that there's a checkbox here to highlight parameters that change when switching battery or control profiles. And that's checked by default. So what that does is that highlights the input fields that are subject to change depending on what profile you're on. And iNav manages different profiles for different things. So for your mixer, you can have up to two profiles. For your PID loop, your PID rates, you can have up to three profiles and you can have up to three battery profiles. I've never used these. These two used to be under one option prior to iNav 7. They've broken it out into mixer and PIDs. I haven't used them. I do use the battery profile because I have two different batteries, of different capacities. So I like to define two different profiles. The thing that I don't understand here is that there's no color coding. All of the shaded fields in the UI, the user interface in this iNav tool are all shaded with the same color. So I have no association. I don't know whether this is connected to the mixer profile, the PID profile, or the battery profile. But anyway, I don't use these two, so I'm going to ignore those for now. I've never changed this one, number of motor poles. I don't know enough about this to know why that's important. And I have been flying just fine with it set to 14. I'll look into that in the future to see if there's some reason I need to change it. But for now, I'm just leaving these defaults. If you have a reversible ESC, you can enable this option, and that'll give you the option to utilize that function. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a little box here. First of all, you have to have the enable or the motor and servo outputs to be enabled for this to work. And this is something that you can enable if you're testing your motor. It's very important to remove your props to avoid injury, just to be safe. But here you can enable this option. And by doing so, you're stating that you understand the risks involved in doing so. And then you can go over here and drive your motor. I don't have a battery connected, as I mentioned, so it's still reading zero volts here. Otherwise, if I had a, bat a battery connected, I could drive the motor. <clears throat> and you will see the current reading from your current sensor and your voltage reading from your voltage sensor that are coming from the flight controller. Now, at this point, these aren't 
calibrated yet. We will go through a process of calibrating these so that you get proper readings here. And there's a whole process for going through that. And I will point you to a website that has some tools to help you do that. There's a guy online that maintains that, and he's one of the iNav developers, and it's a um, pretty good tool. So here you can determine whether your motor is spinning in the right direction or not. You do not have the option in iNav to reverse the motors. That's determined by your hardware, your ESC. So if your motor is spinning the wrong way, just swap a couple of wires on your connection. The motors are connected to three wires. You can swap any two, and that will reverse the direction of your motor. So you have to physically do that to reverse your motor. Now if I scroll down here, now we can see the servos that we've defined back in the mixer tab. So we have four servos. And this is another place where it would be nice to have these labeled because servo one drives the aileron, servo two drives the left rotor vader, and servo three drives the right rotor vader. And they're tied to these outputs over here. I don't know why they've spread these apart so far. There's some user interface enhancements that I would like to make to iNav if I were an iNav developer. And what you see here are the pulse width values. The PWM or pulse width modulation is used to drive your position of your servo. And that signal is a pulse width that varies between one millisecond and two milliseconds. One millisecond represents the rotation to one extreme, and two milliseconds represents the rotation to the other extreme. And your midpoint sits at 1.5 milliseconds, or 1,500 microseconds. So these numbers here are represented in microseconds. And most servos have some buffer there. So the 1,000 to 2,000 range is their comfortable working zone, but you could conceivably set these numbers outside the range to drive the servos a little bit further. And I know the servos that I have, I use these Emacs servos. You can drive them um, like 500 more in either direction. So it can go from 500 to 2,500 milliseconds. Normally though, you'd probably just want to leave these at their defaults. There is also an a, a servo trim, auto servo trim feature that will change these numbers as we will see later on down the line after we've got this all set up and we're flying our planes. You might come back into iNav and see that these numbers have changed. Now servos 1, 2, and 3 are tied to the roll pitch and yaw, stabilized roll pitch and yaw. So those are the only ones that would be affected by the auto center, auto trim function that we'll see later. So servo 4 is my pan servo. And I, I happen to know that these numbers don't quite work for centering my servo. And I will have to look up the numbers here. And I can do that because I have them. Oops. So 600, 2400 and 1570. So 600, 2400. So I'm not quite going 500 to 2500. I'm giving myself a 100 microsecond buffer on either end. But I know that the, my, my servo does not center quite exactly at 1500. So I set it to 1570 to get it centered there. Now, one thing you might want to do if you don't use the auto trim feature, which we haven't even looked at yet, is once you get your airplane in the air, you're going to want to fly it in manual mode to set your trims mechanically, set your trims as close as you can get them to the center. And if they still don't quite center right, you can make adjustments to these values here. So once you get your mechanical trim set up, and by the way, you don't want to set any trims or mixing in your radio. You want to do that all through iNav. So if you set your mechanical trims so that your, your trims on your radio are set to zero and you've got your mechanical trims as close to zero as possible, but maybe it's still a little off on one of them, you could come in here and make an adjustment. Let's say you have to set it to 1540 to get it to center properly. Now the problem with that is 
1540 is not the center of the range of travel of your servo. So you have 40 more microseconds in one direction than you do in the other. At 1500, which is the center, you've got 500 microseconds either way. But with 1540, you're offset a little bit. So if you wanted to maintain the center between your mechanical extremes, you could add the same offset to both of these. So now 1540 lands in between 1040 and 2040. So that becomes the actual center point. But I'm just going to leave these all at their defaults for now. And now that I've got everything set up here, I can do a save and reboot. Oh, by the way, before I do that, note that there's a reverse option here. This is what I was referring to in the mixer where you could either reverse the servo here or go into the mixer and change positive to negative or negative to positive. Again, I don't know the rationale for doing it here versus there, but the option is here. Enable live mode, I'm not sure what that does. I haven't been able to really figure it out and I haven't researched it, but I think it somehow gives you the ability to drive your servos, or I guess when you change the numbers, maybe it drives the servo while you're doing it. You also wanna keep that off if you're not using it. And by the way, it's a little annoying here when you operate the throttle because this is represented in percentage, whereas this is the pulse width value. So I don't know what 43% translates to in my PWM value. I would like to know the pulse width here. The pulse width here. So again, here's another thing that I would like to change if I were an INAV developer. But now I'm done with what I need to do here. I want to save and reboot. And that concludes the outputs tab so that we can move on. But once this comes back up, I just want to make one last look to make sure I got everything set up the way I want. I've got the motors enabled. I've got defaults there. This is always off unless you turn it on. I've got my settings here and it looks good. So I'm going with that. And we can move on to the next tab, which is ports. And don't forget to disconnect.